Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a teapot with some flowers in it. It's going to be part of a new series this year, and I'm really excited to start on it. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's going to chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those, and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Right, so if you're new to our live stream shows welcome and um, we are going to be just painting straight through um, not sure how long it's gonna take I haven't painted this ahead of time so um, we're just gonna kind of figure it out as we go that's kind of the normal um, way we do our shows is kind of all live and um, you get to see the whole process from start to finish um, I don't know why my mic is in the shot today <laughs> push okay. him up out of the way <laughs> um anyhow uh so yeah we are glad to have you stop by i hope you enjoy it um and we kind of chat and talk during the show and take questions and at the very end we'll do a q a but if you've got questions about what i'm painting while i'm painting it you can ask those in chat and we'll try to answer them as i go along um I'm using a 12 by 12 canvas today and I've just painted it with a very streaky layer of um, white and yellow oxide. So equal parts. I just kind of put the blobs on here and a little bit of water and, and painted it on. So nothing really fancy. We're just going to use this as our ground um, for the background of our painting today. Um, you're going to want some brushes, obviously. <laughs> uh, I've got a 12, 10, and 8 uh, flat, bright um, brushes. The flats are longer. This is a bright. Um, and then a couple filberts, some round brushes, um, angle brushes, and different sizes of rounds, and a couple liners maybe too. So just grab what you've got, and um, I'll be using a variety, and I'll tell you what I'm using as I do. But these are all Princeton brushes. The the red handles are their velvet touch line and then the green handles are the um, summit 6100 series brushes so those are my two favorites to use uh, let's go over our colors we've got um, carbon black burnt umber yellow oxide indian yellow hue and uh ultramarine blue phthalo I'm sorry, that's Thala Blue. Thala Blue Green Shade Ultramarine Blue. Doxazine Purple. This is um, Light Ultramarine Blue. That's just Ultramarine Blue plus White. And then this is uh, Quinacridone Magenta. A little bit of unbleached titanium, titanium white, and some um, gloss glazing liquid. We'll probably be using zinc white later too on the um, finishing touches on the teapot. I'm already losing my words, so that's a good sign. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and do our drawing. And I'm going to try not to get this fresh paint. We Mark dried it, but the edge is still wet a little bit. Mm -hmm. Try not to get it on my clothes. <laughs> Famous last words. We'll see. <laughs> see how it goes. All right. So um, I want to fit my teapot in to kind of the lower third. I want to leave plenty of room for my flowers. I want them to go all the way up here. And so I'm probably going to squish in my, my teapot down here. So I'm just going to kind of make a couple lines for where I want it to fit there and there. And then just figure out how wide I want it. Um, and I'm kind of centering it sort of on the canvas, but I want to leave room for the spout. So I'm sort of centering the, the entire width of it, um, in here. And then the body of the teapot will be, um, a little bit in the middle here. If that makes sense. So it's a little bit offset. All right. Um, so that looks about right. I'm going to go ahead and sort of start mapping out my teapot arm here and I'm just using a light charcoal pastel chalk pencil that in black but you can use whatever whatever you've got that's a like a, a water soluble or you know soft chalk is better than using graphite because graphite will show through your paint so um, you know it could be part of your the look of your painting if you want that to show through it's an artistic choice but if you don't want it to show through then your lines to show through then you want to use a water soluble pencil or a 
watercolor pencil of some sort or chalk pastel chalk chalk pastel or soft charcoal any of the above all right so there's our kind of bottom area here I'm going to round off and you can see kind of how I'm, I'm doing multiple lines I don't ever like try to draw it perfectly in the one you know the first time I'm just kind of trying to get a general feel for where I want it to be and then um, I can darken up the lines later or I'll just you know as I paint it in I'll choose the line that I like the best there so it comes out a little bit where the handle comes out on either side so somewhere in there you can mark it down the center too just to make sure you've got it symmetrical I feel like it's a little bit maybe needs to be a little bit longer on this side sure got a new side cam is it working ah there we go Ooh, yeah, it's it's facing the light, so it's got a little bit more glare. But yeah, I've got my phone hooked up to a side. I've got a little new little side light here too that's adding some brightness to the scene. Oh, I thought that was me adding the brightness. Adding the bright. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> all right there we go so the handle is about the same or maybe a little you know taller than the body of the teapot there and again you can you know kind of do whatever shape you want if you don't want to do a black one you could do a color whatever works for you i'm going to curve this line out just just a little bit and this line here kind of curved just like a little bit right here okay and i photoshopped these flowers in so these were obviously not part of the original composition but they're going to be all up in here these are actually flowers that i got last year at some point i think last year the year before maybe and i thought they were this is my favorite color combination with flowers i love purple purple flower purple, purple and blue and it so happens that it's the pantone color of the year this year so it's kind of a fun that'd be a fun one to do all right so there's our kind of sketch very light sketch i didn't really do much with the flowers i'm not going to worry about sketching those in we'll just kind of work it as we go all right there we go um let's see what do i want to use for my Let's go ahead and um, I'll use this one, I guess. This is a 3 8 inch angle brush. I'm going to use that to paint in my teapot. Let me get the black. And I'll paint the background too, but I'm just going to go ahead and give this a coat. And um, I want to kind of blend out the background a little bit around the sides of the teapot anyways. So this will just kind of give me a starting point like I want to soften up the edges here of the teapot going into the background and I'm going to keep this kind of a painterly type pot it'll be realistic looking but I'm not going to go too crazy with it I'm just I want the painters the flowers to be really soft and painterly so We'll kind of paint the teapot to match that style. Okay. How's chat doing today? Chat is okay. Good. How are you doing? 
I'm doing good. I'm glad to be painting flowers. I'm in my happy ba- place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> painting flowers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's always a good day. Yeah, so it's good to be in the studio on a snowy day like this. Yes, it's snowing here. It's Pickle is enjoying it. He doesn't seem to mind the snow much. Mm-hmm. He likes it. Mm-hmm. Although his hair is not quite as long as it was last year. So last year he didn't want to come in. He'd just go out and just, and we'd be like, Fitz, you need to come in. Mm-hmm. You know, and he'd be hanging out outside in the snow. But this year, his hair is a little shorter. He's not so. <laughs> it's like it's a little cold. <laughs> He was cute this morning. He took his baby. He's got a stuffed animal that is his baby. And um, he brings him out every morning to go potty. It's it's really adorable. And Mark was saying this morning he took him out and didn't lay him down. He just he realized it was too cold for him out there. So he brought him right back in. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> like, okay, baby, we can't be outside today. <laughs> Not good conditions. No. <laughs> he's a good he's a good brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Taking care of him. And he takes him out at night too, just before bed. So he's he's like and if he's if baby's is still outside from during the day, he'll bring we'll go him. get your baby and he'll bring his baby in, you know. It's really cute. <laughs> Okay, something like that. I feel like this side is a little wonky, but it'll be close enough, I guess. I think the problem is that this this is sticking out higher on this side. I brought this rounded out right here a little bit more, so I'm just going to have to bring this down. is a little bit better and then our teapot handle now the handle goes right up to the top of the teapot and it's a straight line and then it angles kind of down and back and widens out a little bit Somewhere like in that. Okay. Use the edge of the brush just to draw that line in. And the harder you press down, the wider it gets. So I want it a little bit wider at the top. And it's going to go behind my flowers, but it's going to be covered up by the greenery. But I'm going to go ahead and put it in just so that if it peeks through, it'll be there. super even up here but again I'm not worried about it because it's going to be covered up by the flowers all right so let's go ahead and get <clears throat> an angle brush here I'm going to get the six angle 
and I'm going to get some of the burnt umber and unbleached titanium. And I'm just going to kind of put some streaks and things in the background. Get some of the yellow oxide. Use it. Put a big old thing in the way here. This is the 12 bright. So using the background color, burnt umber, unbleached titanium. The background color was white and yellow oxide. And there we go. So I'm just gonna kind of paint in this neutral, but you could really do any colors you wanted. Our color scheme for this one is going to be um, basically kind of a orange yellow with um, blue and blue violets um, and a little bit into this range, but um, kind of the opposite color is going to be this yellow orange or the complementary color. Um, so we're going to do that in a neutral palette um, to keep it from clashing with our purples. So if you want to use complementary colors, a good rule of thumb is to um, you know, choose one color that is like the main dominant color. So in this case, that periwinkle ultramarine blue, um, purpley blue is going to be our dominant color. And then um, this yellowish color is sort of our, um, I don't know why I did this, thing first and not, I don't know what I was thinking there but huh I know exactly <clears throat> hey real quick somebody would like well, to know I wanted to soften up see how it's softening up that edge I'm going over it just a little bit so I'll paint over this black too a little bit what were you saying somebody would like to know do you wear any special painting clothes or are you just a neat painter uh, I'm not a neat painter. <laughs> not a neat painter. I do. I've ruined lots of clothes. And I mostly wear um, clothes I've already ruined. So what I do usually is like if I've, you know, if I've worn something and it's gotten to where I don't, you know, wear it out anymore, then it kind of goes to the painting pile. So that's kind of generally what I paint in is my old clothes that I don't wear out anymore once they kind of are starting to look a little shabby then I'll use them but today I have a my shirt that I don't want to get paint on so I turned my sleeve inside out so that I don't get any paint on the good part of it if it do get paint on it'll be on the inside of it, it won't show so a little paint trick there <laughs> Um, so going back to what I was saying about the palette, the, you just want to, you know, choose your, choose your palette, um, you know, colors that will um, complement, you know, depending on what you're, you're painting. But if you're choosing a color that's opposite on the color wheel, which often uh, will look really really good that you know the colors opposite on the color wheel are going to um, be a really um, dramatic um, color scheme but sometimes they can be overpowering if you use them so if I use like say a really bright yellow with this um, then it would definitely like overpower um, that blue that we want to be our main color so we're using a neutral palette we're softening up these colors and um, using them in a tones and tints instead of straight out of the tube strong colors so the Indian yellow hue is really kind of our our main um, this color here is the would you know if I was to use it it would be the bright full strength color um, but this in the yellow oxide is kind of a toned down version of it um, not exactly the same tone, but you can see it's got some of the same color a little bit. So that's why I used it. And I'm going to use the ending yellow hue in the greens, though. So I'll 
I know we'll have a little bit back here. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of it, but. about my teapot because I'm just going to paint over all this anyway. So I wanted the edges to be a little bit fuzzy. So kind of painting over them a little bit will kind of add that fuzziness. And then when I go back in and paint them in again, I'll leave just a little bit of this area that is the kind of covered by the lighter color. All right, so I like that. And then the bottom area, I'm just going to use a darker, like more of the burnt umber, and I'm going to go about halfway up the teapot with that. And the top edge is kind of fuzzed out too, so um, let me get it on here. Let me use a little bit of the glaze maybe. And just kind of tap along that edge there and soften up that edge. Now, if you get a, like a line, see how it's kind of lifting that color and that can happen. Um, you just need to let, let it dry and then you can go back over it and get it, give it a second coat right here where it's, you know, kind of coming up. I can kind of try to get it on there thick, but I'll probably need to need to go back in here and do a second coat. And again, if you don't want to paint around your teapot like this, you can paint the paint the teapot in after you do this background. So either way, I, I do it both ways. I just kind of, because I knew I wanted to soften up the, the teapot edges, I just decided to do it this way, but it's not necessarily the best or only way of doing it. Get a little bit of black here and add that even down here just showing you an option that's it you know just a way that I like to do things sometimes I like to try new things sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and again I haven't painted this ahead of time so I'm kind of working it out as I go I have an idea of what it's going to look like I mean we've done you know 500 600 videos at this point I've been painting for about 30 years now, so I'm a little bit over. So I kind of generally know sort of what's going on, hopefully. But, you know, painting is never like cut and dry. You, you're, it's always kind of an adventure every time you sit down at the canvas. So try not to. And you kind of have to um, be a little bit flexible, too, I think. I found, you know, just kind of have an idea of how it's going to go, but if it looks a little bit different than you sometimes, you know, expect it to, then that's okay too. So try not to get, it's just paint. We can always kind of, if something doesn't work out, we can always paint over it. So of course doing it live like this makes it difficult to do that. <laughs> sometimes I finish a painting. Oh, I wish I'd done this. XYZ. Somebody actually um, suggested to me yesterday that, uh, you know, an idea for painting this year could be like to um, take some of my older videos that I wish that I had done differently and, and do them again, you know, and change them up. So might be something we'll look into. Could be an interesting... I'm always kind of looking for new every year. I kind of try to think of new um, new series to do for the year. So the teapot one will be one that we do and got a couple other ideas that, that I'm stewing on that I haven't fully decided yet, but I always like to hear we've got a poll going on right now. So if you've got ideas for our channel, you can 
go to my channel community page, which only shows up on computer. So if you're trying to do it from a mobile device, you'll be frustrated. It's not there. <laughs> Somebody was like, I can't get to it. And I was like, yeah, you're probably trying from a phone. That's probably, probably why. I don't know why it doesn't show up on phone, but it doesn't right now. So, all right. So right in here, just kind of mapping out sort of my general shapes and large flowers there 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 okay somewhere in there i like the background so far this part definitely needs some work here but i will let it set and give it a second coat but I'm pretty happy with the background I don't want to start my flowers until I know that I like the background though because the background you can't paint around the flowers that's paint over to the top of this but not around the flowers or I mean I guess you could it just be a different look to it everything's a possibility I guess all right so I'm gonna get the yellow blue and the Indian yellow hue it's gonna make a really pretty green and then I'm gonna get a little bit of black over here and use that with the Indian yellow and you're gonna need more yellow than black like a lot more yellow than black and this will be our darkest areas for our you can see in our photograph there's some areas around the flowers that are really dark so we'll start with that kind of dark color I'm using the six angle bright again and I'm going to. Do we have the fire going? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seems it's my paint's drying out really fast today. Thanks. brush around so that the bottom is facing down towards me and then I can do leaves that way with that I'll get I'll do little dabs and things little leafy type of shapes There's not a ton of leaves with this though so I don't need to do a whole lot but I am going to kind of get some of the well I've got a really persistent fly here that wants to get in on the action um when I do the centers of the delphinium, so kind of figure out where those are going to go and do some of those stems. Try to keep them thin. Wow, fly. <laughs> He's like right on the top of my canvas. He's going around on my canvas. I yeah, I know. He's being a pest. So I need to, before I do much more, though, with the background, I need to um, fix my fix my black handle here. So I'm going to get my black. Now he's gone. I know. Yeah, he just, he's, the, he, I think they know, they like know. they know <laughs> when, when the handle comes out. Mm -hmm. They're like, nope. I'm out. Never just mind. Kidding. Just, uh, kidding. just kidding. I'm gone. <clears throat> I won't bother you anymore. Until it goes away. Oh. 
Okay, so zoom in. I'm going to... Just want to zoom in right here so you can see that fuzzy edge, what I was talking about right here. See how painted over that black edge there, and so I'm leaving that fuzziness along the edge. And then same thing here, there's that kind of fuzzy. So I'm going to go right up to it, but not completely over it. So there's just a little bit of that fuzziness still showing. Now, if you want a super clean line, then you'd obviously just do your background and then do your black face over the top or, you know, pot over the top and not leave this fuzzy edge. It's just a stylistic choice, so. And I can force that by adding a little bit of that kind of background color to the black and kind of just painting it in Look along that edge a little bit. And then don't, don't leave it outlined. You kind of have to blend it in. Oh, he's back. He's on my canvas. <coughs> You get him? Yeah, he's right there on the paper towel next to your camera. Oh, lovely. <laughs> dead fly. No, don't they don't show, need to don't show. show them, they don't just need to he's, see the he's dead fly. He's sleeping. Oh, okay. He's sleeping. He's pining for the fjords. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is he an ex fly? <laughs> he's meditating. <laughs> It's like, it's like suicide by a cop. It's kind of that, I think he was, he was in that vibe I was getting from him. He was, he's pretty bold. He was being, yeah, he was just pretty like, bold. He's inside on a slow day, couldn't leave one alone. Right. He was just... All right, so let's finish up the, sorry about that. That's not usually part of the show. Very weird interlude there, just side. Yeah, no, we don't usually do fly swatting during the show, if we can help it. Another thing you can do if you're not sure, you know, if something's looking symmetrical or not, is you can flip it upside down. So I can turn it upside down and look at it. And then sometimes if if there's a part that's off, you'll it'll be more noticeable. Or look at it in a mirror too. That's another way of kind of it just kind of breaks your perspective and that visual. Mm, barrier or whatever it is your brain, you know, kind of gets when it tunnel vision, I guess, when you're painting and drawing something, sometimes you know, like literally won't be able to see what to change. So it kind of helps you snap out of that and see things from a different perspective. All righty. Good. Get the handle.
And I'll have a, if you don't want to draw this yourself, um, I'll have a traceable for this after the show. I usually do it after I paint so that, you know, I have a accurate rendition of what we've done. So I'll work on that this afternoon. And we post it on our Patreon page. It's small fee for unlimited downloads of traceables. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I missed the cue for the graphic. There you go. Mm. And action. <laughs> but yeah, patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. That's where we have our traceables and bonus video. We'll be doing the bonus video next weekend. We're painting a boho lamb. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have a lamb, or, or a, it's actually more like a sheep. It's not a lamb with uh, flowers on his head. Because <laughs> as you do, you know, got Easter coming up in a couple months. It just sounded fun. I need something to get out of the Christmas winter. Doldrums. Start doing some funny, fun, more spring-like paintings coming up here. All right. So using this brush just to kind of do some thinner lines, Be easier. Make sure you thin out your paint with water, and that'll give you an easier time of doing these thin lines with the round brush. If you have the paint too thick, it won't it won't come off your brush. It'll just stick kind of stick to the brush. The thinner the brush, the less um, you know, the less bristles it has to push that paint around. And so if you have a very thin liner liner brush or something, it's not going to be able to it's not going to be strong enough to push the paint around. So you have to thin out the paint so that it'll flow off the brush. All right, so you see how I've got like little areas of light and dark, that you know, variegated um, darkness and things in here. That's what we want. And then I'm going to get my a little bit more of the yellow and my white or unbleached titanium. Um, it's just like a off white. It's just got a little bit more of the yellow tone to it. Um, and adding the yellow to the instead of just green you can see adding the white to just the green it kind of turns it into like a sage kind of a muted almost gray um, green but if you add a little bit of yellow to it it'll make it more of a vibrant green um, so that's what i'm going to use here and just add some yellow bits to my greenery You have to have it dark enough for this to show up. So if you don't have it dark enough, you're going to have to, you know, make sure you add some dark. So your little light greens will show up. And they probably won't show up much against the background because they're very close in value to that background color. Um, and value by value, I mean dark, you know, dark and lightness. So they're very close to the same darkness as the background. So they'll not show up as much against that background color. And I'm just going to kind of put some, get some medium green here and put some leafy shapes in and just kind of random little bits here. I'm not going to get too fussy with it and I'll add more of this later, but I just kind of want a backdrop for my flowers to go against. And that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and work on our vase a little bit. We'll let that dry really well so that um, <clears throat> when we do our flowers, we'll have a nice dry background ground for them. We get some black here, and I'm just going to, it's kind of thinned out with some water. You can add a little bit of glaze too if you want, and just kind of darken up this area here. 
kind of comes out. There's like a little bit of a shadow. It kind of pulls down and out to the side a little bit. Wipe my brush off. So once I get that paint down, wipe my brush off and then work these edges and just kind of fade them out. Let's pull that paint around a little bit. Okay. And then let's go ahead and I need more brown. Burnt umber's gone. Let's go ahead and work on the transition right here between these two colors. Get a little bit of... Oh good, I still have some of this color wet. I didn't think I would. So just adding a little bit of the burnt umber to that background color, pulling up, and then let's grab that burnt umber and add it, overlap it this way and pull down a little bit. Okay. And then while that's still wet, just kind of like what we did with this, you know, kind of use that brush that's sort of almost dry and just kind of softly blend over that edge and to kind of smush those colors together a little bit. Okay, so get the lighter color and kind of tap over the edge with the lighter color and I'm going to pull up so that it sort of blends out up above the line. And then get my darker color and pull down, overlap it a little bit, pull down. And if it's not dark enough, you can add a little bit more the dark. Get a little bit of glaze there just to brush clean so that it's dry but slightly damp and just kind of go back and forth lightly over that edge so it was a little bit too wet the paint was a little bit wet there that's why it lifted so I'm gonna get a little bit more of that just a little bit thicker paint and it works better if the paint's a little thicker that glaze that I added to the burnt umber kind of softened up the paint a little bit but you can see how the, now it's kind of a nice soft line so for now I have like this weird halo you see how I have this light color going down so I want to get some of the burnt umber and just make sure we kind of break that line up and bring that burnt umber or like you know just a little bit darker tone in and break up that line there and here Pretty happy with that. Sorry, I was off camera there a little bit. Get my black and touch up any parts that I covered over. All right. And I can check my, my line. I feel like my lines might be a little bit off, so I'm gonna just going to check that line and make sure that it's straight. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay. It's pretty. Nope, not dry. Just smudged it. Puppy can be adorably cute right now.
It's not showing anything. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. out all righty so I think I just added more green so let's go ahead and we'll work on this pot down here I'm going to I guess I'll use this brush the three eighths inch angle. And I'm gonna put out my zinc white now because I want kind of a soft, the zinc white's transparent. And I can, I can get kind of a similar look by, you know, just making a gray here with my white and I'll probably use a little bit of that as well as the zinc white. So I'm gonna start by kind of mapping out where this curve is here and I'm going on the handle side not right on the line and then I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm going to take that wet paint and just kind of pull it out in towards the towards the handle Kind of use a soft touch and if you get too much you can get a little bit of black and go along the outside edges with the black and kind of soften it up so the idea is to have kind of a bright color right in here Let me get a little bit of zinc white and because the zinc white's transparent it'll kind of go on a little bit softer so I need to probably let that initial layer dry first. Do you see what it did there? That wet, the, oh, wow, that's really shiny. <laughs> um, the wet paint, the zinc white was wetter than the paint that was on the canvas, and so it lifted off the paint instead of added to it. So just need to let it dry happens all right I'm gonna get a little bit of white and do the rim there and then let's get a little bit of white right here just kind of on there a little bit on the handle I'm gonna try to kind of go around the leaves a little bit So just on the inside. Corner there, and then just still wet. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit brighter white here. Just a titanium white. Do a little bit like real bright white right there. See how that pops that forward? Just a little highlight. And then we'll figure out where our line is here. I'm going to start kind of dark. So don't commit to anything right off the bat. Let's see. So it's kind of right in here somewhere. Just going to kind of tap. It's really kind of almost just above the this line. So find that line and kind of just go just above it. And it sort of curves up just a little bit right there, just just a tiny bit. But okay, so that'll be good and that'll kind of give us an idea of where to do our dots from got all these little dots 
And I'm going to get a little bit of the, let's get a little bit of the zinc white with this gray here. I'm just going to start by putting a big old highlight on this part. It goes right from that line just above and then it turns into dots so kind of don't want to extend it too far just want that light color sort of underneath my dark dots in this area right here so taking some of that black and just kind of softening up around the edges of this and leaving that light, light gray right in that area. Okay, and we could leave it like this if we wanted to. It looks good just as is. If we don't want to have to, you know, add the dots, you can just do this and then be done. So it's up to you, your choice, your painting. Pulling a little bit of the black down over. And I'm going to put a line between the bottom there. Okay. And this I'm just kind of like glazing a little bit of the darkish gray there. Looks good. We'll let that dry. This, I think, is dry enough now to finish. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and go back to this two round here. Well, no. Let me think. Mm. Maybe I'll use this one. This is the two flat. Got a little bit longer handles or longer bristles, so I'll be able to do some of the flower petals. And I'm going to get the uh, light ultramarine blue, which is just ultramarine blue plus white. Get some of the darker ultramarine blue too. Have a little bit of both colors there. I'm going to start with this darker ish tone. And I'm just going to tap in along the line and kind of do my basic flower shapes of the delphinium, which kind of kind of a cone-shaped flower. Um, you know, each individual flower kind of comes off this main stem. And opens up and kind of faces down. Kind of a really pretty. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of dab and create. Overall shape of the flowers. Maybe make one of these a little taller somewhere. Maybe make this one a little taller so they're not all the same shape or size. You see how they were all kind of right here and they kind of were making an arc. So by pushing that one up higher, it just kind of breaks up that, that shape a little bit. And of course, this will break it up too right here, having it dip down and then having this one be a lot lower than the rest of them will help as well. Okay, I'm going to bring this one out a little bit. Even though it's not in the picture that way. Okay. And I'm putting these 
on fairly thick so that it'll cover up because if you don't it'll just be a little too transparent this the white in this color kind of helps it cover too make it more opaque Okay, and I'm getting some white now. I'm just gonna dab whatever's left in my brush with the white, and then I'm gonna use the white with this and put some highlights in on the petals. And just think about where the light's hitting. Sometimes it's kind of kind of hit on the outside of the petals sometimes you know these facing down they're gonna it's just gonna be on the tops of them but keep it random I find that it just looks a little bit more realistic if you don't try to look make it look perfect just kind of Dab your highlights towards the top, but some of the petals that are cupped at the bottom are going to catch light too. So you're going to have, you know, um, trying to think of, you know, you've got a you've got a a flower that's doing this, you know, that's that's open. It's got several petals, you know, but this is just an example of like the top and bottom one. So if it's kind of facing away from us a little bit, the light's going to hit here, and then it's going to hit here too. So, and you'll have like a little area of dark right there, kind of in the middle, you know, and then depending on where they're turned around it, you're going to get different and they're not all going to be perfectly facing you either. So some of the petals that are coming straight up at us, we're maybe only going to see a, like a line of highlight right here and it'll be dark down here. I'm just painting my fingers, but you get the idea. So... So that's why I was saying just keep it random, you know, because you'll get all these different shapes and things. If you kind of maybe squint at the reference photo too, you can kind of will help you see the overall values and shapes of the um, things. So you're not getting too bogged down in all of the details. Sometimes the detail can be overwhelming and you really won't be able to see kind of the um, flowers for the trees or whatever, <laughs> you know, you won't be able to see um, the values. You'll just see one like mass. And so if you kind of squint, it sort of helps break things up and makes you, helps you see it differently. Or stand back and look at it from a distance too helps. I'm not just going on the flower itself too. I'm going kind of over it and outside. The white is opaque too, so it's gonna it can cover our background color. But look how pretty that is. I love painting flowers because they're so I don't know. I find it relaxing and they're very forgiving. Like you kind of just. Put little dots here and there and then all of a sudden a flower emerges you know and I think the less you force it overthink it or you know try to make it look a certain way the better just kind of go with what's what's happening I know that's not really super helpful <laughs> when you're struggling with it but I think that we can be our own worst enemies sometimes when we're painting these kind of things that are sort of impressionistic style and trying to force a certain look to it. Just kind of be open to what's happening and adapt as you go. Okay, getting the darker color now. I'm going to add some kind of darker centers to some of these. This is the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue. So using it, it's still, I've still got a little bit of white to my, in my brush, so it's not full strength. And just tapping, tapping, dabbing. Okay, a 
looks good. And then I want to get some, you know, color that's just kind of peeking through here and there. So go ahead and dab in between some of these leaf shapes. Um, you know, some of this color is going to be bleeding through from the other side. That looks pretty good. And I think I want to kind of round out just a few of these shapes so that they're looking more finished. Just a few of them. for the paintbrush around the around microphone. The mic. it's, it's in a weird place today. I don't know why it's... I think this can't... The, the, I think the problem is the the canvas is thick, and so it's higher than it normally is, and so it's... Mm -hmm. it's. I don't have as much room to work with before it's the, cam, the mic is right there. All right. So let's go ahead and stop messing with those. <laughs> And I'm gonna get some of the green while I'm thinking about it. Just some of that thalo blue and Indian yellow hue. And add just little, little, if, you know, if you don't have like little lines going to, to your flower petals, they, each one of the petals or the flowers is coming off the stem on its own little kind of line. So do that. You can add a little bit of the green to the centers of some of them. I'm going to add a little bit of white and just add a little tiny dab of Kind of over the top of that dark blue that we did, add a little bit of light green in some of them. And then there's going to be a little, let's kind of get both colors, a little bit dark, a little bit light. And there's going to be a little buds also on these, so add a little round buds and I'm just like literally have both of the colors on here and I'm just tapping down to to get these little rounded shapes happening. Alright, I'm happy with that. I think I'm gonna stick with this brush. It seems to be working okay. I'm gonna get some purple and uh, ultramarine blue. We'll do the bachelor buttons, which are those kind of darker blue purple flowers. And I'm going to start kind of dark with them. stem out here for this one. go by the picture it just kind of gives us an idea of where what they you know shapes we'll just 
add some white now. And keep it a little bit more on the purple side so when you add your white if it's if it's the same color as this you can add a little bit more purple to it that dog's the same purple and we want to show up against this other color here some of the darker color and tapping that back in. sighing over here <laughs> like are we done yet <sighs> she's still painting oh my gosh she's such a teenager sometimes I'm just making sure they all have stems to them <clears throat> kind of like feet for birds right exactly check mm -hmm. yes and get some of the dark purple just dab in the center of these with the dark purple Looks good. There's more of them in our picture up here, so I might add some buds. Okay. 
And then I'm going to add my white flowers. And I'm going to use the yellow, maybe a little bit of the purple with it to create a gray. And use that as kind of the base color for the flowers, the white flowers. And that'll give us a darker center to them. Then we can add our add our white highlights on top. I'm going to go ahead and put some up here. And I'm going to put some up, like a little bit over the top of the vase coming down. Okay. And I want to make sure that I'm leaving some of the... I'm going to go ahead and bring some down over the side right here. Leave um, some of the green, <laughs> you know, so it's very easy to like cover up all the green here. So, and I'm notorious for doing that. I mean, who would... Who would do that? Put in so many flowers you can't see the other stuff. <laughs> Nobody I know. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so now the pure white. And just using that to highlight my petals. so it's not like only down here. Okay. Adding some of the Indian yellow hue with my white. I'm going to grab some green too. Green. Green and yellow in the centers of these. What? Ah, so <laughs> uh, yes. Is this the first time you've shown this side? Mm -hmm. yeah, we've, we've been taking everybody's comments and stuff, and we're trying to trying improve our to, video production yes. here. <clears throat> Close-ups to the palette. Okay, there we go. Oxidine purple here and dab it again. Centers of these. Now the centers are circular, but as they go away from you, they're going to be oval and these ones where the petals are, you know, covering most of it are maybe not even going to show much of it at all. So these, the only ones that's going to be like really circular are going to be the ones that are kind of really fully facing us. These couple ones here.
Okay, and then I've got the scabiosa, they're called. I think that's the right word. That are these rounded purpley pink ones. So I'm going to use the quinacridone magenta, a little bit of purple, and the unbleached, or the burnt umber. I'm sorry, ultramarine blue. Blowing my brain. And do that right here. So let's do one right here. And there's supposed to be one right here. I put flowers all in it. I'm going to put it up here. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it over the top of... I'm going to have to cover something. I'll put it over the top of this one right here. centers of it. Well, let's get some more white here. And again, I'm not I'm just using what's left in my brush here. I'm going to dab in around it. It's similar to the bachelor button, only it's got more petals layered. So the bachelor button's kind of most flat. It's like a single layer of petals out around, maybe two layers of petals fanned out around and this one's kind of more stacked in towards the center almost like a mum and this one we're seeing the back side of it and then this green sighing about there oh I just nearly yanked the uh, headphones out of my, off my head so oh. <laughs> felt good yeah yeah you know it's good to kind of jerk your head around every once in a while <laughs> unexpectedly some of the Indian yellow hue, some white. Dab in around. All right, we're almost finished here. We gotta finish up our teapot, but other than that, we're pretty close to being done with this. Alright, so let's <coughs> go back. We'll let that dry because it's got a lot going on. I probably need to give some of these a second coat. Like the bachelor buttons here.
and I'm going to go over it with the ultramarine blue and that will kind of bump up the saturation in the flowers with the light colored petals it will kind of since it's transparent it will almost work like a glaze brighten, brighten them up a little bit okay there so they got a little bit of depth they're looking a little flat and then I need a little bit of the darker purplish color here and there and here of this quinacridone magenta with the unbleached or uh, ultramarine blue too and some of these petals so I'm going to add a little bit of this pink to some of the petals up here It'll also kind of tie in the color story we got going on. And I, I need some of this darker green and some of these flowers. I'm going to take off my chalk marks now. I'm still seeing a few of them peeking through. Let's go ahead and work on our vase here, or not vase, our teapot. Acting like a vase. Um, let's go ahead and put some titanium white out and some carbon black in a fluid form. We'll see. I'm not sure if I need the fluid or not. We'll see. So I'm going to use a thin round here, my number two round that I've been using. And I um, can kind of map out my angles. So my, um, my lines are going to go Cross this way. And they get over here. We're not seeing really any of them. What? Oh, they're so much clearer that the, <coughs> that side angle doesn't work very well. Okay, we'll have to fix that. 
maybe move it to the other side. just going to help me kind of have an idea of where to put my dots. So these ones start out big down here. And then in between. And then eventually you're not going to see them at all there once you get into this black area. So really the only place that the these light or the dark is matters is in this area right in here. As they go up, they get smaller. And as they go to the side, they get smaller, so. seeing this. Do we need to zoom in? You can move this up so you can zoom in. Okay. What? Get your what? Oh, I was trying to figure out a way to get your your phone closer so I could get a better angle, but oh. I don't want to disrupt no. and get right in your way. Right. I mean, after all, I guess you do have to paint. Mm -hmm. Look at those. People were wondering if you were going to be doing those or not. Do what? The little knobby, bump, bumpy things. Yeah, yeah i got to do them. Of course. What I'm probably going to do is do them kind of bright and then maybe um, maybe glaze over them. I kind of got off there. That wasn't quite right. Um, I'm just looking at my picture there to see where they're at. Because they kind of change depending on the angle, you know, that you're seeing them at. Some of them are kind of right in the middle, and some of them are almost around them. So these ones that we did with the black, we're just going to kind of highlight sort of the middle areas. And then they get a lot smaller as they come up. Closer together.
And so we'll do them kind of bright, and then they'll we'll glaze over them to tone them down. I need a better. I'm gonna get the angle brush because I can get a more rounded dot on these. There we go. Um. And they're almost, by the time they get over here, they're almost in a line. So I'm just going to kind of, and then we'll, we're going to glaze this area. So, and by glaze, I just mean we're going to add the darker color over the top. It'll tone it down and make it look more realistic. And... And then up this way. Just need to stick with my lines here. They're they're too thick thick at the top. <laughs> Small at the top, bigger at the bottom. And then as they come up this way, they're Just do the lines with a faint. Oops. I'm wiping them off so that I can just barely see them. I guess I could have used chalk. Super careful here. Probably should be more. I'm getting tired of doing these. Oh, good thing dots aren't flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. And then... Let me get the black again here. And there's actually rounded bits along the edge of the vase, so, or teapot. There and over here too. Okay, and then this is what I was talking about with glazing, so. These should be dry enough. I'm just gonna go over them with a transparent layer of black. Just gonna tone them down. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Until they kind of disappear. Okay. 
Okay, and then go back in with the little bit more white and just add whoop, that is too too much and get the round brush again I can use the black I'll use the black first actually and outline so these again Careful you are, the better it's going to look. I'm not being super careful. getting the right shape here. They're not wanting to do a round dot for me. I've been having that same problem for a few years now. I'm having <coughs> getting the right shape. Getting the right shape. Mm -hmm. like the last inning of a baseball game when they keep changing out pitchers yeah to see if they can win the game hmm. well I can I, I there's a couple of things that I could do I if I make the paint like um, more fluid it'll come off in a circle like I could use the back end of a brush even um, but you have to use really thick paint to do it that way and I don't want it to be super thick because then it won't dry for me and I won't be able to glaze it again so what I need is like a blunted tip around that'll won't be super pointy because the more pointy it is the more like lined it is and the thicker the paint the more of a dot you can get see how I can get a dot with a really thick paint, but I don't want it thick. So the more I thin it out, the less of a dot I get, the more of a point I get. So that's what I'm... Um, no, I don't want it. The stylus will also can I make a dot. Let me do... This is a one round in the... Let me see. Still... I'm just going to keep messing with brushes here until I find the right one. A palette knife? Be one. No. 
This one seems to be doing okay. Okay, we'll try this one. And which one is it? It's too odd. Round. It's kind of fuzzy on one side, so I'm have to be careful. All right, so gray here. We'll try this again. Oh, yeah, that's better. I just want a uniform kind of roundish shape. This other ones we're kind of doing like lines, almost like dotted lines, instead of round shapes for me. These are not round either, though. Honestly, I'd probably just leave it. These are kind of a pain. I mean, they look okay. I don't know. Just... I was trying to simplify it and make it faster, but I'm not. It's, it's, I don't know that you can with it. It's just, you kind of have to just do them. Mm -hmm. And be careful about it. There's not a fast way to do it, which was what I was kind of trying to do. But to look them, make them look good, you're going to have to kind of just do, do them the long way and basically paint them in individually give them shadows and highlights But, you know, I find that, like, this kind of thing, that um, sometimes more is better. You know, the more I mess with it, the, the more layers it has, the more it kind of obscures the pattern a little bit and makes it not so obvious that you've, you know, if you have one little one that's not quite perfect, if that makes sense, you know. So if they're all kind of a little bit messed up or, you know, imperfect, then it kind of makes the whole thing look better. That's just my opinion, though. It kind of gives it a more of a painterly look, too. I'm just having really hard times with these brushes, this brushes messing up on me too. You see that's got like a little hair sticking out. So it's not cooperating very much. You may be convincing some people to uh, <clears throat> not do the dots not on theirs. Not do the dots, yeah. Pretty much. I wish I hadn't done the dots. Well, like I said, I feel like there's probably an easier way of doing them. I just... If you had the right brush, you'd be able to just kind of pop them out pretty easy but this brush my brushes are not cooperating today and making dots uh you know the other option would be to just do the dots with the back end of a brush or a stylus or something and then let it dry completely and then do your things but i don't have the luxury of time to do that but you could do that you know and then your dots would be of course they get smaller as they go up so you have to change you know you have to kind of change your size as you go up but um, <clears throat> it could be done that way Mm-hmm. 
so I'm not really keeping my line straight, so that's a problem. Your dots should be lined up this way and that way. Like they should make a line this way and this way. Once I get them kind of where I want them, then I can get the tip of the brush and highlight just a few of the ones kind of here in the middle in the area that's sticking out the most. white I think just barely damp and kind of go around the outside. If it's too wet it'll pull the paint off too much. I don't want it to pull it off. I just want it to kind of push it around a little bit. fluid paint's too thin. It's not doing a really good job for me, so I think I'd use the heavy body acrylics for this. I don't like the fluid paint, what it's doing. It's like drying in the middle before I even get a chance to push it around, so I'm using the heavy body acrylics now. on here is kind of a satiny finish it's not super like shiny so you can kind of blend out your highlights a little bit it's that cast iron doesn't have a really bright sheen I've got one kind of like this in blue it's really pretty I haven't used it in a while I need to pull it out again the keeps the tea warmer if you if you heat up the cast iron it keeps your tea warm for longer but I've been doing it by the cup lately at 
unless you got a guest, the whole teapot's a lot <laughs> to drink in one setting, <laughs> at least. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go back up here, add some highlights in my... I mean, us coffee Maybe drinkers so. don't give up on a full pot. <laughs> Just saying. That's true. <laughs> That's cute. All right, making some green with my yellow and the yellow blue. white so it's a little bit lighter adding some white and yellow here we go I yeah, just want some lighter lighter green here and pull it out to the flowers that are sitting out by themselves And these are the finishing little touches. You can stop at any point when you're happy with yours. So. This is where the Angela comes out. <laughs> yeah. <I'm laughs> yeah. I need to. No, it's good. I mean, I think it shows that, you know, as we said before, you know, I, I used to think that, you know, if you don't paint it perfectly the first time, then you're not a good painter. Mm -hmm. But it's not that. It's that you're doing the layers and, right. and layers, which slowly add and bring out all the details and, right. and shades and things. So. Yep. Yeah, it's all about the layers for sure. to our scabiosa here. I'm sure it's probably not pronounced that way. Maybe, maybe it is, I don't know. Get some brighter pink. Just add some little dots, these little random buds and things here and there. It'll help lead the, lead the eye around too. So, you know, if you've got an area that needs a little something, just maybe put a couple dots there, do little dabs of something. happy with that I think for the most part I 
I kept it kind of contained so if you wanted to you could kind of break out and put something way out here or way you know off in here too and that's another option kind of maybe do like a, just some leaves or something out there kind of adding a little more interest around it giving it a little and you could put some flower petals down on the ground you could do whatever you wanted to with it um, I'm pretty I think I'm I think I like the background I think I like it I kind of wish I had left it just black because I liked it better I think before I messed with the vase but that's it is what it is now so I'm gonna go ahead and put my signature on here mm -hmm. This brush is not doing a great job for you. Let's try it again with a different brush. Let's see if this works. Super chat. Yes, super chat. No, my brushes are not working for me. <clears throat> I need to get some better round brushes here. I think all my, I haven't cleaned them out right, and they're all fuzzy. Okay, are you ready to try this? Yes, let's do it. It works. Okay. Boom. Oh, we're doing comments. All right. Super chat Ooh. right there. Pair character with lovey-dovey eyes blowing red hearts in the air. So that was a like a little meme that went on. Oh, that's on. funny. Yeah. So it give it, it, it instead of showing it, it gives a description of it. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but I think they also commented later, you know, simply amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. That's great. And then Celtic peasant. Thank you. We have There we go. From Colleen. Colleen, she thank says, you. Uh -huh, learned something new. So, what was that? She uh, she first had a hard time with Super Chat, so she uh -huh. donated through PayPal, ah. and then she got to where she could donate through Super Chat. So she donated nice. Super Chat too. Thank you. So thank you, Colleen. And then we have from Angela. Oh, yeah, thank you. This. Thank you. Always like learned so much and gained Aww. so much audience, uh, confidence from you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's Angela. awesome. Then we have... I'm just glazing again here with the black. Sorry. Why you from Pat. That? Oh, um, wow. Thank you, so much thank you for Pat. The great tutorial. Love seeing the way hey, you, you guys paint. did lots of super Flowers. chats today. Happy New Year to you both. Thank you for your time and Aww. talents. Thank you. So sweet. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> so, so, hmm. so all the questions that we had. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm going to add some darker blue to some of these flowers here while you're doing that. Just playing around here. Yeah, so the I feel other, like they're a little flat, so just all the questions that I save, most of them are gone. Oh no. I guess it buffers or something, so oh, let me shoot. see if I can find some of them. Oh, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. So I know one of them was uh regarding yellow uh -huh. ochre versus yellow oxide if okay. they're the same. Um they're they're very, very similar, so you can really kind of interchange them. Yeah. They're very similar. Yellow ochre and yellow oxide. Okay. Oh, man. No. Oh, no. Well, we had a it, good idea. Yeah. So you're going to have to maybe do them during the show. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
after all. There was a question regarding uh, glazing. Oh, yeah. no, so not glazing, uh, sealing your painting. Okay. At the end. So, varnishing. any recommendation? Yeah, varnishing. Thank you. Any recommendation for that? Um, use a golden, I use the golden, um, um, isolation coat and then you can use a there they have a varnish as well so I would use something made for acrylic paints though you know the all the manufacturers the paint manufacturers or at least the good ones like Liquitex and Golden stuff will I I've only used Liquitex and Golden so I'm not really sure of the other brands how good they are but um you definitely want to want to seal your paints though or seal your your paintings because they acrylics are sticky so if you leave them they'll get dust and stuff on them and be hard to clean so the varnish just protects them all right yeah so I apologize to everybody. I was telling them that we were saving questions to the end, and I had them in the queue. But apparently, like I said, it only it holds so many, and I didn't realize that. So. Oh, no. So after you added too many, it just yes. dumped them all? Yes. Oh, well, that's not great. I know. So I'll figure out what I did wrong. And okay. If we can do it better next time. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Getting a few little highlights here. I really like how it turned out, though. I like the colors. These are definitely the good, like, Pantone colors of the year. The the periwinkle, very peri, is the Pantone color of the year. So it's I always like to kind of start the year with a painting that falls into the Pantone mm -hmm. color of the year. It's a good, good kind of starting. Last year was the yellow and gray so we did the yellow uh flowers on the chair with the gray background that turned out really good so and this year this is this is our start to 2022 if you okay, missed yeah. the uh pineapple that we did on tuesday night that one turned out really fun too that was a fun like pop art thing so let me know if you'd like to see more in that style and that pop art um style because i kind of like to do like at least two more fruit in that kind of style i thought it'd be a fun series to do but um and let me know if you like the idea of doing a series of these teapots in different... I thought we'd do like a seasonal, at least maybe four this year, um, maybe more, depending on you know how, how well the video does, if you guys like it and watch it and share it and all that kind of thing and paint along. Um, that usually determines kind of if I continue a series or not. So if you guys like it and um, watch it, we'll do more of them. So let me know in the comments. We'll leave a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and splatter this, too. I think it'll add to it. I got a comment question. Okay. Here, so. Go ahead. Uh, it was regarding the golden paints. Okay. They said that yours look so smooth and buttery, uh -huh. uh, but theirs seem to go on watery or doesn't stick. So mm. any, do you have any suggestions or advice? And they're using golden paints? Yes. Is it the heavy body acrylics? I believe so. I have some of the golden paints. Angel's paint looks smooth and better even on our canvas. Mine goes on too. Water doesn't stick is very uneven. Um, you know, it depends too. Oops, whoops, whoops. Wow, I just got that all over myself. Um, it depends too on the color you're using. So a transparent color will go on watery. Um, so um, you may just be trying to cover with a paint color that is transparent so if i was trying to cover this canvas with ultramarine blue say um it's a it's a um 
a transparent color so it would go on kind of watery looking it wouldn't cover very well so I would probably add a little touch of white to it um, to get it to cover and then I could go back over it with another layer of just the ultramarine blue and it would um, cover it in like two coats instead of three or four um, with a transparent color so that might be the problem you may be trying to cover with a co pink color that's not going to cover and the transparent colors you can see on the back of the tubes well some of them nope those. <laughs> you see there we go um, whether it's opaque or not it'll say right at the top it says transparent opaque and so if it's over here on the transparent side even midway um, and you can also see here on the front um, if it covers the black stripes or not so um, the transparent colors like the Indian yellow hue you're not going to be able to cover a canvas with this and have it cover over other colors you have to add a little white or another opaque color for it to cover another color right. so, so that's probably what your problem is is what I'm thinking this one here completely covered over all the colors. right yes yeah so this one here this light ultramarine blue has got white in it and you can see how it's completely opaque and it covered up it covered up the background just fine. So here's another question. Somebody would like to know how do you mix the very peri color? Oh, the very peri color. Okay. Um, yeah, the ultramarine blue and maybe a little tiny bit of purple. But yes, um, I think that that. And I think it's kind of a dark ish periwinkle. So depending on how dark you want it, you can add a little white to it, you know. So. But yeah, oh, I like the splatters. I added the splatters with the blue. All right, I always like some splatters. A good excuse to add some splatters. <laughs> all right, is that all? And, and oh, the, no. They said that their burnt umber uh -huh. looks transparent. Uh, burnt umber, it shouldn't be. It should be. It should be burnt solid. Burnt. So, um, it may be. Is it a new? If it's an older one, it may it may be separated. I don't know. You know, they might um, have to contact Golden. Yeah, you that. could. You could try contacting them if it's you know if you've got some defective a defective color that happens. Mm -hmm. So, okay. for sure. All right. All right well, I think I that like it. Pretty good. Yeah. Hope you guys liked it. The teapot it it we we got it in the end it's all right <laughs> it's it's got the dots it may not look perfect but it's there <laughs> you know you get what you pay for sorry i don't know what to tell you <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. Thanks guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, come back to see us next time. We're going to be back on Tuesday with another video for you. Uh, I don't remember what we're painting. Oh, we're painting a frog. That'll be a fun one. All right. Hope you join us for that. We'll see you next time. Bye.